How do you know that 3 plus 4 equals 7? How do you know that it doesn't equal 8? Would this still be true if humans didn't exist? What about if the universe didn't exist? It's questions like these that form the basis of one of the most important debates in philosophy of mathematics. Is maths discovered or invented? This has been a debate for thousands of years and there's a wide range of stances you could take. Well, obviously it's discovered. Um, it was obviously invented, not discovered. Was to. Was not. Was to. Was not. Was to. Was not. Discovered. Invented, discovered. Invented, discovered. Invented, discovered, invented, discovered. Invented. Okay, okay, okay. So there's clearly some strong opinions here. So why don't we talk them through? You will take the invented side, you take the discovered side, and we'll have a debate. Well, go on then. I'll go first. It seems that we didn't make up that 3 plus 4 equals 7. That's a fact that we can verify in the real world. Here I have three apples, and here I have four apples. Together, I have seven apples. That's a fact that's never going to change. This would suggest that we discover mathematical truths through observation of the real world, which is known as mathematical empiricism. But this view is often rejected by mathematicians and philosophers alike, because of its difficulty in explaining how we then abstract those observations into general truths. I've seen three apples and four apples, but how do I know that it works for other objects? How do I know that 1000 plus 1000 equals 2000 if I've never seen that many objects at once? How can I have a concept of infinity, imaginary numbers, calculus, if there's no real world analogue for them? It would seem that there's a lot more to mathematics than can simply be gleaned from observation of the real world. <sighs> okay, what about Platonism? Even if we agree that mathematical truths aren't empirical, we can still argue that mathematical entities exist and are therefore discovered. This is a view that a lot of people take known as Platonism. Plato believed that numbers were entities in themselves and existed outside of the physical world and regardless of the symbols used to represent them. But then we face the huge issue of how we can have knowledge of mathematical entities. If they exist separately from us, but not in the physical realm, how can I have access to them? I know about this tree because I can feel it, I can see it, I can hear the leaves in the wind, I can even smell it, I can ask experts about it, and I can learn about its properties. But if maths doesn't exist in the physical realm, how can I do any of that? I have no causal relation to it, so it would seem that maths is actually invented. If mathematics is invented, we might say that it's sort of like a game. This view is known as formalism. Take chess for example. I've got pieces, these would be our axioms in maths, and I've got rules for how I can move. These would be our rules of logical deduction that ensure that if our axioms are true, then everything that we deduce using them must also be true. But just like a game, I can change it. I could start with a different piece, or I could put them in a different orientation to begin with. So with maths, I could, instead of having the axiom of extensionality, I could take its negation and see what results I get. Similar to this, we could do this with geometry. We have Euclidean geometry that assumes that all parallel lines will never meet. But we can have non-Euclidean geometries that remove that assumption, and we end up with some quite interesting results. But this raises the question of why mathematics is so incredibly useful in describing reality. For example, number theorist Godfrey Hardy claimed that his work would never have an applied usage in science. However, since his death, his work has become instrumental in the field of cryptography and even won a Nobel Prize for the Hardy-Weinberg law in genetics. Feynman is quoted saying that the mathematical model of reality could calculate the distance between New York and LA within the width of one human hair. So if mathematics is invented, its accuracy and applicability to science seems to be inexplicable. Quine and Putnam argued that we have an ontological commitment to anything that is indispensable to science. As mathematics seems to be indispensable to science, then we must be committed to the existence of mathematical entities. But mathematics is useful to science because we have made it so. We've chosen axioms that match reality, and therefore what we deduce using them should also match reality. Maths is useful, of course, but that doesn't mean it has to actually exist. Scientists use false or overly simplified assumptions in their work all the time. So maths can be useful, but it doesn't have to actually be true. Yablo argues that maths is world-orientated make-believe. It's kind of like a metaphor. In the same way as we would say the average family has 2.4 children, but not actually expect the average family to exist. I can't go down the street and visit Mr. and Mrs. Average and their 2.4 children. That would be ridiculous. So we might say that maths is a useful fiction. But isn't maths intuitive? It seems to be an innate sense that we have within ourselves. 
But this raises the question of how we know our intuitions are correct. A lot of complex mathematical proofs have been shown to be false because of human error, so maybe our intuitions aren't that good. But what about logicism? This would suggest that mathematics is an extension of logic, so mathematical truths are known a priori, or by deduction. But this raises the problem of how we can understand the nature of numbers. How do I know that Julius Caesar isn't a number, for example? And another thing, we might argue that math is an art, or even a social construct. Both of these have issues in that they don't seem to explain the way that we do maths. They seem very far from reality, and again, don't explain how we apply this to science. But it would be wrong to compare maths so closely to science. Most of the time we do it for the sake of it, not for any real-world application. But we're still doing maths to discover more about the realm of mathematics. If we weren't learning something new, why would we do it? Because it's fun! Maybe you just haven't learned to appreciate doing something just because you enjoy it and this whole conversation is to justify your pointless hobby. No, it's much more than that. Of course it's enjoyable, but we're learning new things and making discoveries about what we're capable of as humans. You can't honestly tell me that's all made up. You're the one arguing that numbers are spooky and they exist outside of the physical realm. Oh, grow up. Oh yeah? Fight me. Invented, 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 discovered, 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 discovered. Okay, well, that got quite intense. Anyway, as we've seen, whether you think math is discovered or invented, there's a wide range of stances you can take. If you think math is discovered, then we face the issue of how we can have access to mathematical truths. If you think it's invented, then you face the issue of how it can be so well applied to science. Mathematicians and philosophers will likely never come to an agreement on this. But what do you think?